Today on the Trey Hart Channel, we're going to be talking about Diet Sabotage. Stick around. Hello and welcome to the Trey Hart Learning Channel. I am Ray Upchurch, your host. Yes, you heard the beginning correct. I'm going to be talking about Diet Sabotage. Now, when I think about sabotage, I picture in my mind a die-hard film where everything is being blown up. Though I'm not talking about that type of sabotage, our diets can sometimes be sabotaged. When it comes to diets, in my opinion, there are two types of people that are the main saboteurs. The first saboteur is yourself. Sometimes we are our own worst enemy. The second is anyone that is not yourself. This is where family, friends, and co-workers reside. There are several ways one can sabotage oneself. The first is by eating too few calories. When a f person eats too few calories, this will usually have one of two effects. The first is to cause them to binge eat later, and the second is to actually stall their weight loss by slowing down their metabolism, and sometimes cause their body to go in starvation mode. So the body starts to conserve energy rather than burning it off. The best thing for this is to ensure that you don't go too low on the calorie recommendations, and if you notice that you're starting to stall, you may need to actually increase your calories to the top of that recommendation. Just as a reminder, according to the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, this is 1,200 to 1,500 for women and 1,500 to 1,800 for men. The second way we sabotage our diet is by putting foods on the forbidden list. This unfortunately causes us to binge eat on other foods in an attempt to satisfy our craving for the forbidden food. As I discussed last week, I do not leave chocolate off my diet, but I also do not eat chocolate solely. Small amounts of forbidden food is not harmful as long as we keep calories as the primary focus, it will not derail our diets. The third is by skipping meals. Skipping meals is never a good idea. This is because we become too hungry when our next meal comes around and it's harder to stick to our diet recommendations. Basically, don't skip meals. The fourth way is by having what I call diet holidays. These are usually weekdays, but can it be applied to any holiday? Sometimes a person will diet all week, and then on weekends they will eat what they call normally. This is sometimes also applied to holidays. Now weekends are about one quarter of the month, so not sticking to your diet on these days alone or when combined with holidays can seriously derail your diet. The best plan is to stick with your diet plan even on weekends and holidays. The fifth way is by grazing through the day. This can and does lead to unwanted calorie consumption. The way I have overcome this is by dividing my calories throughout the day and I allow myself three meals and two to three snacks as part of my calorie plan. The sixth way is by overdoing the workout, the post-workout snack or drinks which have the unfortunate effect of eating or drinking away the calories we have just burned. The best way is to avoid having these drinks or to have water or low-fat snacks such as low-fat cheese or a half meal bar that has both protein and carbohydrates. The seventh way is by late night snacking. We put on a movie, then we grab our favorite snacks, we put up our feet and watch the show. These calories can add up quickly. Remember the overall calorie count. So while we can have a snack such as popcorn with the movie, we should count these in. The eighth way is by losing motivation. No matter what diet you're following, if you lose your motivation, you can lose hope and energy. Motivation building is helpful and remembering your ultimate goal and what your plan is is helpful as well. 
The ninth way is by taking your workouts too easily. While starting any exercise program, you will not want to overdo it. We also need to stay within our own capabilities so as not to harm ourselves. Sometimes we don't use our full potential. An example is by only exercising once a week. When we should be exercising three times a week or by doing a very light walk workout when we're capable of doing a moderate walk workout. But the best thing is to exercise with your own capabilities and prove this as able. The tenth way is by not counting calories from beverages. The best thing is to remember that all calories are to be counted. Sticking will, with water will remedy this and is the healthiest option overall. Yes, we can sabotage ourselves in many ways. And if dieting was not already hard enough, added to this is the second type of saboteur. I have included family, friends, and co-workers in this category because they are often the most guilty, after yourself that is, of trying to sabotage your diet. There are several ways to do this. Sometimes it is by trying to project their guilt onto you, trying to tempt you into stopping your diet, thus they feel better about themselves. Unfortunately, some people don't actually understand. They have never actually had a weight problem. They may even think it's silly because they've never really worried about what they ate, so why should you? Some actually miss the old you. Sometimes this is because now instead of time with them, you're spending time in a gym or doing other healthy activities. And sometimes this may be fear, like the fear of losing your loved one because now they are fitter and the fear that others will find them more attractive. The ways to overcome saboteurs is first not assuming the worst. Just because someone cooked your favorite dessert doesn't mean that they are trying to sabotage you. Some people equate food with love. Remember, if you're following a calorie diet, you can just add it as part of your calories. That is, if you choose to. It doesn't pay to be defensive, but it also doesn't mean that you have to do something you're forced. If someone is trying to push food on you, say no. Remember, you don't have to feel guilty and you don't owe them an explanation. Though it is hard to waste food, the old thinking that you have to clean your plate needs to go away. Discretion is the better part of valor. Plan your strategy beforehand. If you've been going to your favorite aunt's for years, who knows your favorite dessert is rhubarb layer and always cooks it for you, then you will need to make a strategy. One of the best things you can do is actually turn them from saboteurs into your very own support system. Actively recruit them to help you with your diet. Many studies have been done showing that when a person has a support system, they do better. The important thing to remember is that you will get stronger and with experience, this will help you with dealing with your diet saboteurs, whether it's yourself or others. I hope you have found this helpful. And as before, I've put a link to a diet tracker journal that you might found helpful. If you've liked this video, please press the like button below. And if you're not a current subscriber, please subscribe. That's also on a button below. Remember, you are worth the effort and your health is your wealth. Next week, I will be talking about stress management. See you then.